Hi, this is Leo from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how to carry out a chi-square test of independence. The table below summarizes a data set that examines the responses of a random sample of college graduates and non-graduates on the topic of oil drilling. The 2010 survey asked 827 randomly sampled registered voters in California whether they support drilling for oil and natural gas off the coast of California. Complete a chi-square test for these data to check whether there is a statistically significant difference in responses from college graduates and non-college graduates. So here we have a two-way table with three rows and two columns, so a three-by-two table. When we see this three-by-two table, uh, we're thinking either it's going to be a chi-square test of independence or a chi-square test of homogeneity. Here we have one random sample. It says that the 2010 survey asked 827 randomly sampled registered voters. So this implies there was one sample. So this is going to be a chi-square test of independence. And now we can set up our hypotheses. The null claim always says nothing's going on, everything's independent, and nothing's related. So H sub O always says that the two variables are independent. So the response and being a college graduate are independent is our H sub O. And so our A sub A is that response and being a college graduate are dependent. We can set our significance level alpha to 0.05. And we can check our conditions for the chi-square test of independence. We need one random sample, and this is going to have two variables. All expected counts should be greater than or equal to 5. So this is a random sample of registered voters in California, so that is met. To see whether the expected count uh, condition is met, we'll have to find the expected counts. So we can do that. The table gives us the sample values, which are the observed values. And now we need to find the expected values based on our H sub O. So the expected is going to be the row total times the column total over the table total. So if we look at this uh, spot right here, the corresponding expected value will be the row total, which is 286, adding these two up, times the column total, which is given as 438, over the table total, which is given as 827. And so that's 151.5. If we want to find the expected count that corresponds to this spot in the table, We'll do the row total, which is still 286, times the column total of 389, and divide by the table total. We can do that for each of the six spots, and we'll get our expected values. And we can record those, and these are all greater than or equal to 5. And now our chi-squared statistic is given by this here. And the degrees of freedom is number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. So our chi-squared, our degrees of freedom is going to be 3 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, or 2 times 1 is 2. So we have 2 degrees of freedom here. Our chi-squared, we can take the observed, which is 154, minus the expected, square that, and divide by the expected. We have to do that 6 times. Or we can use a calculator shortcut. So I'll pull up a TI-84. And we need to first enter the observed matrix. So we're going to go to second matrix. And I need to edit that matrix. So I'm going to hit the over arrow. And then always choose matrix A. And this is a 3 by 2 table. So I'll just enter 3, enter, 2, enter. And now I just enter those observed values. Let's see, we got 180, and then 126. Be careful not to enter the total. That's not part of the table. So this is 3 by 2. And so now I can run the test by going to stat tests, find chi-squared test. So here's our chi-squared test. This works for both independence and homogeneity. There's a separate one for goodness of fit. So here's our chi-square test. We can hit enter. We already have the observes entered in the matrix A. We did not enter the expecteds, but we'll see that it works without doing that because it will calculate it itself. The calculator can do that for us. And so we'll just do calculate. And there's our chi-squared of 11.46 and our p-value of 
zero, zero, three. So let's see, we can record those values. And now, let's see, we can actually go to second matrix and edit matrix B. So we noticed that before matrix B didn't exist, but now it does because we've ran our test. And so we can edit matrix B here and we'll find the expected counts. So a shortcut that you are allowed to do is to run the test by going stat test chi-square, run the test, then edit matrix B to find your expected counts and record them on your paper. And then remember to indicate that they're all greater than or equal to five. So you can find the expected counts on the calculator. Okay, so now we have our p-value. It's very small, it's less than alpha. So our conclusion is reject h sub l. And if we reject h sub l, we do have evidence for h sub a. So we have evidence that response and being a college graduate are dependent. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.